Hi everyone. Uh, in the event of Heart World Heart Day, we are here to talk about the heart. We've got with us here Dr. Kapil Kumawat, who is a electrophysiologist, cardiologist. Basically, to say he is a specialist in heart rhythm treatments. Dr. Kapil Kumawat, we welcome you to, you to the show, sir. Thank you. When a patient goes to a hospital, sir, the common terms he gets to hear in the hospital is cardiac arrest, heart attack, and heart failure. What are these terms, sir? How do they differ? It's a very important question, Dr. David, which you have asked. And uh, though these terms are often used interchangeably by patients and sometimes even by the healthcare providers, but they are entirely different things. Now, heart attack, which is the most commonly used term, refers to a condition where part of the heart stops functioning because of the poor supply to that particular part of the heart. And that happens because of blockages mostly caused by cholesterol in the blood supply of the heart, which is the coronary arteries. Now, this is a very specific condition. It may or may not lead to cardiac arrest which basically is an electrical phenomena. Now, cardiac arrest is a condition where there is a sudden electrical disturbance in the heart and that can cause sudden stoppage of the heart and kill the patient instantaneously that is cause sudden cardiac death. Now, there are various causes of cardiac arrest apart from heart attack. Now, coming to heart failure, this is not actually a situation where heart passes or fails. Now, this is a condition where heart becomes so weak or heart becomes unable to relax properly and that causes poor functioning of the heart leading to a particular set of symptoms and these are called as heart failure symptoms and the condition is called as heart failure. So, it is very important to understand the difference between these three terms because the connotation is different, the approach to the patient is different and the treatment is also different in most of the scenarios. Oh, nicely said, sir. I think we got the message about the three terms. And uh, what I'd like to more stress on is the cardiac arrest, sir, being an electrophysiologist. I'd like to know what are the causes for this cardiac arrest, sir? Yes. So, it's very important to understand about cardiac arrest. And unfortunately, in the lay media uh, and even sometimes, as I said, by the healthcare providers also, Whenever there is a cardiac arrest, when a person dies suddenly, he is referred to as having died because of heart attack, which is incorrect. Now, you would be surprised to know that cardiac arrest causes four times more death compared to what a heart attack causes. And that is why it is important to understand about cardiac arrest, because cardiac arrest can take place in a perfectly normal heart also. It can take place in a person who is never known to have a heart disease. But it is more commonly seen in people who already have heart disease, especially people who have experienced previous heart attacks or patients whose heart function has gone down significantly because of any other cause like valvular heart disease. So, cardiac arrest as I said earlier as well is an electrical phenomena where the heart stops suddenly because of sudden electrical disturbance and that can happen in a normal as well as in a normal heart. Now, we have certain scenarios where we know that the person is likely to have cardiac arrest and there we take preventive measures by either putting him on particular medications or implanting devices called ICD which I will discuss later. Oh, well said sir, I think uh, we should all be aware that cardiac arrest also occurs in heart attack but it is not confined to heart attack. Very oh, true, very true, say. very true. It can come for other causes also. Very true. No. When we get a cardiac arrest, is it the end of the show or is it beginning of the show? Yes. So, cardiac arrest is uh, a very devastating phenomena and uh, cardiac arrest leads to death almost certainly if not intervened. And the basic feature of cardiac arrest is a person suddenly collapses in front of you because since the heart stops, there is no circulation and only those few lucky people whose heart is revived on its own, they get to reach a hospital without any intervention. Rest of them will die within few minutes if no intervention is done. 
Now, what can be the intervention? Now, more and more focus is now being given to the fact that the person standing next to a person who is having a cardiac arrest that is the bystander has a significant role to play to save a person from cardiac arrest. Now, when somebody collapses in front of you, everybody should know how to do BLS that is the basic life support and an important part of basic life support is defibrillation and that is why you would have seen that automatic external defibrillator AED machines which a lay person can also use in a person who is dying because of cardiac arrest. These machines are now being in, installed in various public areas like airports, railway stations, bus stands and also in western world in places like schools, gymnasiums, sports arena and so and so forth. So, to treat cardiac arrest may be difficult, but it is important if you can identify people who can get cardiac arrest and put preventive measures in them, that is the best way to approach a cardiac arrest. Oh, very good sir. I know we have got certain hope for these people. Now, how do I first recognize saying that this person has got a cardiac arrest? It is only the fall or his conscious is lost or he has got a, some actions going on? So, so, the heart stops in cardiac arrest yes. and since there is no circulation, the brain stops functioning. Yes. So, the patient becomes unconscious, collapses. Some people can have convulsive movement like seizures or epilepsy kind of movements also if the cardiac arrest is prolonged. So, that is plain and simple way of identifying a cardiac arrest situation that the patient collapses, become unconscious, you would not be able to wake him up when you call his name or try to wake him up by patting him on shoulder or any other means and that is the hallmark of cardiac arrest. So, it is not very difficult to identify cardiac arrest. And if a person sees such a thing where there is no this AEDs where he can defrib, what else can he do sir to say this? Uh, it depends upon the training and inclination of the person who is standing around and uh, uh, he can start cardiac massage which is uh, the oldest form of CPR that is cardiopulmonary resuscitation which is pressing on the center of the chest in a particular way which needs to be learned and in the era of uh, uh, electronic media it is not so difficult to learn about how to give a proper cardiopulmonary resuscitation at least the basic things. How fast should you act sir? Should you act immediately? Immediately, immediately because cardiac arrest situation kills within a matter of few minutes, 4 to 5 minutes. Now, how do I really prevent such things occurring? Anything you want to take on that? Yes, so the, the prevention starts from knowing your risks and your doctor will be in the best position to tell you about the risks of having cardiac arrest. As I said, cardiac arrest happens predominantly in people who have already have heart disease and this, this heart disease can be a previous heart attack or it can be heart dysfunction because of valvular heart disease. But also certain people because of their genetic makeup, because of congenital heart diseases, because of mutations in certain genes are predisposed to have cardiac arrest and how to identify that? If anybody in your family has had unexplained death, especially in young age, less than 50 years of age, all the family members should be aware that they may be at risk of having cardiac arrest and at least once they should get themselves evaluated by a, a trained person who can identify whether they are actually at risk of having a cardiac arrest or not. Otherwise, anybody who has had any kind of heart disease should go to his doctor, cardiologist preferably and find out whether he is at risk of having cardiac arrest at all. Okay, you mean to say somebody who has had a premature death, sudden death without any warning signs. So, what does this premature mean sir? Is it the age or? Yeah, so somebody who is perfectly healthy and does not wake up in the morning for example or a person who was doing his job normally without any symptoms suddenly collapses and dies in office or a sports person who is otherwise very healthy that is why he is a sports person dies on field while playing a sport. These are the examples of unexplained premature deaths and anything uh, in family like this should be investigated and all the family members should be aware that this thing has happened and they should get themselves evaluated. So, in summary you could say that if evaluated and recognized fast of a cardiac arrest, there is some hope and yes. chance. So, yes, so anybody who is at risk of having cardiac arrest, 
the most important line of treatment usually is implantation of a device called implantable cardioverter defibrillator that is ICD and that is implanted like a pacemaker that keeps monitoring the heart rhythm and whenever a cardiac arrest kind of situation happens the machine itself gives the electrical shock to save life. So anybody for example who has had a heart attack and whose heart function measured by ejection fraction is less than 35 percent is at risk of dying suddenly and all such patients are recommended to have ICD implantation done to prevent cardiac death from cardiac arrest. Yes sir, we keep hearing about these uh, implantable devices like your pacemaker and defibrillator and all these things but uh, I keep hearing saying that you can't do an MRI scan, you can't do, uh, is there anywhere we can? Not just MRI scan, there are so many misconceptions about these devices. For example, people believe that uh, electrical storm or uh, thunderstorm outside may damage the device. Uh, some people are even scared to uh, operate microwaves for example. These are all misconceptions. The current devices are all capable of dealing with all the electrical disturbances in day to day life except MRI. And the current generation of the devices, ICDs and the pacemakers are MRI compatible also. That still does not mean that you can walk away into the MRI machine. The machine still needs to be changed to an MRI mode. But most of the devices which are now implanted are all MRI compatible and even uh, MRI can be done. On the other hand, CT scan, ultrasound, chest x-ray can be done in any patient in any kind of device. Oh, very nice sir. So this person need not have the embarrassment uh, in the airport saying that he can't go through. No, no. Machine. In fact, if you go to the airport these days, the metal detector mentions that pregnant ladies and patients with pacemaker can walk through it without any problem and that's the truth. Yes, sir. Now, since you being an electrophysiologist, I'd like to know, sir, people, the common complaint of all ages, I suppose, right, from teenage to about uh, old age, it would be palpitations. So is there anything to do with the heart or palpitations are just to be ignored? No, 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 don't ignore palpitations. Though most of the palpitations, they are benign, that is they do not de denote any significant disease. But you should let your doctor decide whether the particular kind of palpitations are benign in nature or they indicate a serious disorder. Anybody who has a known heart disease should not ignore palpitations of any sorts because these are the people in whom palpitation may denote a very serious disorder which requires immediate treatment. Now palpitations happening in a scenario where uh, a, a thing can precipitate palpitation for example being uh, emotional, uh, a person who suddenly starts exercising after a long period of sedentary life they can experience palpitations just in a natural way and these are the palpitations which we do not really investigate any further. But you start having palpitations all of a sudden at rest without any precipitating cause that should always be investigated. So you mean to say most of the palpitations may be probably a normal phenomena but there are palpitations which can be life threatening also. Yes, very true and especially as you grow older. Uh, palpitations can denote uh, a significant disorder called atrial fibrillation in which the upper chambers of the heart called atria, they develop multiple chaotic short circuits and this condition is very very important to identify because this condition is associated with high risk of stroke that is brain stroke. In fact, almost 20 percent of the brain strokes are caused by atrial fibrillation and anybody who gets either irregular jumpy kind of heart rhythm or a very very rapid palpitation especially after 40 years of age should get himself evaluated. Now uh, this has become very easy these days with availability of uh, wearable devices like smart watches, uh, like uh, uh, various health bands which are available and uh, you can identify whether your heart rate has actually increased or it is just the palpitations you are feeling. Now, uh, important caution to be added to this is that many of these wearable devices may not be very accurate and your doctor may still like to further investigate by either doing a ECG or a longer term ECG recording called Holter monitoring or similar such thing. So, 
with palpitations uh, you need to have a balanced approach and it is not we can't make a general statement whether palpitations are harmful or they are all benign it depends on case to case basis and on the situations and i would say the best person to decide whether the particular palpitation is to be investigated further is your doctor so you should not ignore it go to a doctor once and find out whether to get investigated any further or not no we need to take palpitation seriously also so i would like to know sir now you said in the presence of heart diseases palpitations are there but in absence of uh, heart diseases in young also maybe teenagers there also palpitations are serious yes yes in fact uh, uh, the most common uh, cause of palpitations in young people who do not have it because of emotional outburst or emotional disturbance is a condition called supraventricular tachycardia in which there is a pre existing extra electrical connection or a focus which starts firing for no reason and that causes a very very rapid heartbeat and that happens only occasionally otherwise the person is absolutely normal and these are the kind of tachycardias or these are the kind of palpitations which are eminently curable by a simple procedure called electrophysiology study and radio frequency ablation where we completely eliminate the cause of these palpitation and the person is as good as cured oh very nice no you mean to say even if it say young girl she should not ignore any such palpitations but get it investigated yes the especially if it is happening repeatedly and for no reason no and in case if you don't treat it what happens sir so again most of the times if your heart is normal you are not at risk of having a serious catastrophic event because of the palpitations it may trouble you it may trouble you at a a, a time which may be very inconvenient for example you can get palpitations because of svt while driving and then you can suddenly get startled and can cause it can cause problems but most of the times if your heart is normal if you are young most of these palpitations do not lead to catastrophic event again if your heart is abnormal any kind of tachycardia any kind of palpitations can be harmful and should be investigated thank you dr kapil we really learned a lot about uh, cardiac arrest and palpitations probably soon you will be getting some more calls about these things thank, thank you dr david it was a very enlightening discussion and i'm happy that you raised the issues which i would have liked to discuss with public in general thank you thank very you much sir, thank you.